So the Captivate trial is a phase two study that was designed to combine a Brutinib and Venetoclax, so a double oral therapy without any IV sort of immune uh, infusions. And the goal of the, of, the, of the trial is to see, is it feasible, first of all, to give the two drugs together um, to see a lot of patients who've never had treatment before to avoid chemo immunotherapy altogether, and also is there if you, is there um, data to support that if you combine the two pills together, can you have patients come off treatment in a year and a half or some such time period, so they don't have to be on these pills lifelong as they need to do if they're on individual pills by themselves, like a brutinib by, by itself or venetoclax by itself. So the Captivate trial was designed to treat frontline CLL patients, any cytogenetics. Um, patients all received three months of ibrutinib lead-in period, first as a single agent with the goal or the theory being that we want to reduce the amount of TLS risk or tumor lysis risk by reducing their white count, lymphocyte count, and especially that lymph node burden uh, before introducing the venetoclax. So the venetoclax was introduced as a regular ramp up at month four or cycle four. And then the two drugs were continued together for a total of 12 cycles um, subsequently. And we checked peripheral blood uh, minimal residual disease at, 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 at uh, three to six month intervals along the way um, uh, throughout. And then at the end of um, the 12 cycles of combination therapy, a bone marrow biopsy was also performed to evaluate for MRD. And what we found was that the combination in general was tolerated uh, well. Uh, with the brutinib lead-in single agent therapy, we found that uh, there was a, quite a significant drop in the lymph node burden um, uh, over those three cycles. And there's a nice waterfall plot in my presentation that shows that. Uh, the ALC, the absolute lymphocyte count, first went up as expected with single agent ibrutinib and because of redistribution of cytosis that we see in these patients um, uh, in majority of cases. And then it came down before cycle four and venetoclax were to be initiated. So uh, overall, the tumor lysis risk went down dramatically. So at baseline, there were about 24% people who were at high risk, considered to be at high risk for TLS. That went down to 2%. And overall, I think hospitalizations went down by uh, 66%, um, meaning people with medium or high risk TLS would have been uh, who would have been hospitalized. 66% of those were not needing to be hospitalized anymore to initiate the venetoclax, so that was nice. Um, and then with the combination of the brutinib and venetoclax, we saw uh, the peripheral blood flow uh, the peripheral blood MRD, uh, which was detecting MR, you know, MRD at 10 to the minus four uh, by flow. Uh, it basically went down dramatically over time and about 75% people, 72 to 75% people developed undetectable MRD at the end of the 12 cycles of combination in peripheral blood and bone marrow. So there was concordance between the two compartments. As far as safety is concerned, there were no new side effects that each drug by itself would have would not have caused. Uh, there was a little bit more grade one and two diarrhea episodes, but not higher grade three or four necessarily. And there was a little bit more grade four neutropenia, but not no increase in febrile neutropenia per se. So people might have needed more, in my experience, for instance, I had like 18 patients on this trial. So in my experience, I felt like some people needed to reduce the venetoclax to 300 instead of 400. And some people needed the last injections to get their white count up a little bit more than I would have expected if patients had been on one of those drugs by themselves. So uh, manageable, easily manageable. We, we got 90% patients through all 12 cycles of the combination on this study, and only about 5% patients needed to come off the study for adverse events. So that was pretty nice. I thought um, that majority of patients, vast majority of patients completed the entire uh, trial. What's pending now is that at the end of these 12 cycles, um, the MRD cohort, which is what I was presenting on, uh, need, uh, patients that were going to be randomized to based on the MRD, meaning if the MRD negative, they get randomized to a different placebo versus a group maintenance 
Um, and if they're MRD positive, they get randomized between ibrutinib alone versus ibrutinib plus venetoclax continuing. So we don't have results of post-randomization uh, analysis, of course. And there's a separate cohort on the study called the fixed duration cohort, where everybody stops treatment at the end of the 12 cycles of double therapy, regardless of the MRD. So we want to see how they do over time. And I think this trial will give us a lot of information about the limited duration of treatment with this double therapy and the, sort of the benefit of MRD prospectively um, in determining, you know, PFS, uh, progression-free survival, even overall survival, et cetera, down the line responses uh, and durability of responses, I think, mostly. Um, so I think that's the, the nutshell of my presentation. <laughs>